start which topic yeah actually uh, we, we have uh, something uh, pending from the uh, like uh, data structure also and as you know data structure is a very vast topic right but still yeah. uh, i will go through my uh, notes right which uh, i have put into my workspace whose name is demo you can see here so what is my plan i will just uh, roll over those notes and tell you what kind of questions we should know okay i can spend mm -hmm. some time on something called observer uh, not observer that is called iterator design pattern okay mm -hmm. and uh, how you can use a uh, different collection even if you go for hash map there are different kind of hash map okay like uh, something called weak hash map something called identity hash map so, uh, hash map so there are so many interview questions so we'll start with that let's see how people when people join and we can decide for the uh, course of action and of course the main topic for the day is uh, multi threading right uh, how how we can create the thread how we can manage the thread that that is the main topic okay okay so are you, are you getting my voice clear uh, do you have any echo from my side uh, no your voice okay. is clear okay that's great uh, let me see if somebody else have joined uh, we are the only two people okay so uh, so do you know uh, something about os from your college days sorry Uh, do you know something about operating system from your college days? Yeah, okay. actually, I'm not from the computer science background. Okay. I'm from the EC background. Okay. No problem. Uh, the the uh, only requirement for the programming is actually uh, common sense. <laughs> so yeah. So if somebody have good common sense, right, and willing to do the hard work, uh, that's it. Right. Okay. So because. Uh, i still remember i was taking one batch and i got uh, one student and uh, he was actually mechanical engineer oh. and uh, and at the yeah. end of the batch, he was the uh, uh, he was the best student so it's it's not like this okay so programming is all about mathematics yeah let's see if somebody have joined okay hi abrar hi yeah so uh, so have you uh, gone through some study material of last time and uh, something on collection comparable comparator okay we discussed something about the issues of the using hash map what is uh, buckets okay uh, what is the meaning of equals in hash map? yes i watched your video okay i know uh, i am no uh, i know uh, i think we are covering a lot in one session but i appreciate you people if you are uh, revisiting that video that means you are eager to learn okay so yeah. so you sh you should appreciate yourself <laughs> because if you <laughs> if you appreciate yourself only then world will appreciate you isn't it true right so we are just waiting for more people okay uh, so uh, let's see um, because i think avi is there and uh, rizwan is there to come let's see if somebody else have joined okay so any problem of the last time last time we have uh, done a, a doubt session also okay so uh, pravi have you seen that video of the doubt session yeah i seen it okay okay so some basic question were discussed like uh, uh, because even uh, what is my experience people always ask question on some core concept which people think they already know like abstraction encapsulation modular hierarchy what is design pattern okay there is something called solid principle okay uh, mm -hmm. do you know something about solid principle i know actually the thing is that on the day when you are starting like a section in the mm -hmm. morning 8:30 to 10:30 it's like it's for, for me it's like a vendor call sections so mm -hmm. i'm keep on getting the vendor calls mm -hmm. that was a problem with the 8:30 section mm -hmm. i'm not a issue not a issue right uh, i leave that thing so but but i'm just asking you do you, do you know something about solid design principle yeah okay so like like people ask such type of question like uh, what is a single uh, uh, single responsibility principle okay what is uh, something called uh, open close principle okay. Mm -hmm. okay we have something called lisco and so on so principle. yeah so if you know all these things that's good thing so have you worked little bit on design patterns as such yeah probably okay great so we'll we'll have a session on design pattern this week only and i okay. think uh, if you have listened videos of last session that uh, we have discussed that actually i am little occupied uh, mm -hmm. on uh, actually coming monday to uh, thursday so those uh, four days i may be missing so you have opportunity i, I will hopefully share some assignment with you people okay. okay so that give you the opportunity let's see if somebody else have joined or we can start the session 
Okay, better we should start the session. If somebody need to join, he will join in between, right? Okay. So, so if you see here, this is what uh, you can find here. There's a cheat sheet which I mentioned here. Uh, discussion on Java uh, collection. So I thought some some important questions uh, which we should know. Okay. For example, people may ask something on uh, like these these type of questions. What do you mean by identity hash map? Okay, weak hash map. Okay, and what is the difference between normal hash map? So let me let me pick this thing and try to explain you something on this, right? So one thing is very important. Like uh, we all know how to use hash map, right? So let's say we uh, need to import this guy Java util, and we can create something like this. Let's say hash map. Okay, let's say key is uh, integer, and value is also let's say integer, or I can say string doesn't matter. Okay, so we can create a hash map uh, and normally what is going to happen when you take the hash map uh, you are passing the keys okay and if you're passing the keys how the keys are working because we know whenever we use hash map the key should be unique okay key can not be duplicate okay so basically if you are talking about the key in normal hash map it is basically compared with the equality things okay it will check for equality but in some cases, we can also go for something that is called identity hash map. Okay, so let's say if I if I say something like this, let's say integer, let's say i1 is equal to new integer. So if I'm creating two integer, let's say I'm creating this two, and let's say integer i2, that is also two. So in this case, what is going to happen? Okay, so these these two uh, uh, integer have the same values, right? So what is going to happen if I put into the normal hash map? I can say here m dot put. Okay, so key is i one. Okay, and value is let's say what I should put here. Value one, right? And if I say here m dot put. Okay, I'm putting the value i two and value what I should say, value two. So these are the two uh, two things. Okay, so we can uh, if if I see here, let's say if I'm saying here says out m dot. Okay, if we have a method called size. So what is the meaning of this? What is the size it should give me? So let me try to run it quickly. So it is giving me size one because if we know that hash map is actually checking the equality of the key, right? Okay, but I don't want to uh, keep the keys for the equality point of view. I want to uh, keep the keys according to their identity that means according to their addresses for that thing i can use identity hash map so identity hash map is actually used in some uh, frameworks internally and especially uh, the framework which is uh, used for uh, uh, something about caching or you can say which is also used something about uh, uh, serialization so let me change it here so rather than using uh, normal hash map i'm using identity hash map so if I run this code with the identity hash map, it will give me two. So the basic fundamental between uh, difference between uh, normal hash map and identity hash map is that identity hash map, okay, uh, put the element according to the identity, okay, because although the value is same for integer one and integer two, but their address would be different. So basically, it is used to keep the value according to the address rather than the equal operator. So those type of question I discuss in this cheat sheet. Okay, there is also something that is called weak hash map. Okay, so what do you mean by weak hash map? Okay, so let me make this comment or use it is here. So any idea guys about uh, weak hash map? Okay, I think there is a topic which uh, we should know a little bit uh, about uh, type of reference. Okay, we all know, let's say if I am having an object car, or class car, I can say car c is equal to new car. So in this, this is the way to create the object, right? And until, uh, unless we are saying c equal to null, this object never become candidate of garbage collector, or this object leave out of the scope, then only it become a candidate of garbage collector. Such kind of reference are called strong reference. Okay, so there's a concept like strong reference, and there's something called weak reference, right? And there's something more, uh, if I remember, that is called phantom reference okay and uh, there's something more I think I have found some PDF and I don't I have to check it here uh, okay leave it so uh, okay if it come to my mind I will tell you in fact there are four type of reference one is slipping from my mind 
so we all know about strong reference but there is a concept of something called weak reference okay so uh, so weak reference is a very important concept right uh, on the basis of weak reference so what is the usefulness of weak reference so rather than explaining about weak reference i should give you practical application of weak reference so it is used in something called weak hash map okay so what is the meaning of weak hash map okay so weak hash map have the key key that that is weak reference okay so now i am making a circular definition i am revolving around weak reference but i have not defined it don't worry let me explain you the example on weak hash map and then you will understand uh, i think somebody else have joined now uh, okay this is tech my so uh, so let me continue so what is the notion of uh, weak hash map why we should care about it right so weak hash map uh, uh, if you ask me what is the practical application uh, you know something about caching okay uh, let let's say if we are talking about the caching in spring framework or even hibernate caching is there so there are some caching framework uh, like uh, uh, what is it ec2 or something like that so all these caching framework uh, what is the purpose of caching making uh, performance of application a little better so these caching framework use a concept called weak hash map so how the normal hash map and weak hash map are different let me explain you with an example okay so i'm just taking this uh, or let me do one thing i want to make it comment so that you people can refer it so there is something okay more here so we can take here okay hash map or i think i must have some code from my cheat sheet rather than wasting my time oh, it's not there okay anyway so let's say we have a hash map and uh, i have a class here let's say key right now we have let's say private and uh, what i should say well so what i'm explaining you guys i'm just explaining you what is the notion of weak hash map and why it should be uh, means where it could be used so before explaining you where it could be used i should explain it to you people okay and let's say we could have a oh, let's say it's okay so now what i want to do here i can create something like this key and let's say value is string okay let's say i am here new hash map right so now what i'm planning to do here i'm just trying to create some keys okay let's say i have something here uh key one is equal to new key right so i'm just creating a key and with the value let's say 3 let's say key is equal to a two, uh, two okay so these are the two key and i told you whenever you are putting the key uh, and key is a user defined object you must have a equal and hash code i think this was discussed in detail last time so where is that equal and hash code for the user defined key right so now what i am doing here i am saying here m dot put okay and i am putting some keys here key one and let's say i am putting some value uh, what i should say here value for key one okay so this is the value here i can say here m dot put okay key two and let's say value for k2 this is two values i am giving here now what is the special uh, what is the important thing i am doing here i am saying k1 equal to null okay so if i am saying k1 is equal to null and then after doing that thing i am trying to trade the map okay so what should be the size of the map okay or rather than iterating let's say if i am just printing the size here i am saying here m dot let's say size so what should be the size of the map okay so if i am running it what showing me two still it is showing me two so the point is that uh, what is the so special about this example what i am trying to explain you we have a hash map and hash map was having a key and value what i did i have produced the key is equal to null okay so key is null okay so if key is null of course it means that uh, a user is never interested about the value related to the key k1 right but still what is happening because we are using normal hash map okay so even if you have mentioned key is equal to null java is going not to keep your object null because there is a entry inside the map okay let me repeat what i am saying if your 
if you even put k k1 equal to null okay java don't allow you to delete the entry from the map okay because by default it is a strong map okay because uh, java don't delete it let's say you want that if somebody say k1 equal to null he mean to say that this entry is useless for me and uh, please remove it from the map if i want to say something like this which is important requirement in some framework like caching framework okay for that rather than using hash map i can use something called weak hash map okay so we can use something here weak hash map right so let me use it both the side so this is a special kind of map so right now i'm using a weak hash map and saying k1 equal to null and uh, okay and okay what i should do here i can also define a finalize method let's say uh, although you should not rely on finalize method i think you people know so i have also explained you earlier so this is the finalize method i'm simply saying sys out finalize method is called right so what is happening here and you never rely on the finalize method by the way so now i'm saying k1 is equal to null and uh, after saying k1 is equal to null i'm giving the chance of garbage collector i can say here uh, system dot gc okay so i hope you know system dot gc is a command which is a request to the garbage collector to come on and uh, claim the object which was not used okay and let's say to enforce the garbage collector i'm saying here uh, what i can say here time unit dot uh, what i should say uh, milliseconds dot something called sleep right so let's say we write some sleep here you can also say like thread dot sleep one and the same thing and don't worry today we'll understand something about multi threading and uh, we have to handle the exception that is called this uh, interrupted exception so now what is going to happen here so let me uh, try this example first with uh, hash map because last time i have not mentioned this uh, system dot gc and uh, put like this so let me try to run it and see how much it should produce okay so it's it's waiting for a few uh, millisecond like 1000 millisecond and still it is printing 2 okay so in spite of giving your key is equal to null k k1 equal to null okay because it is a by default a strong map okay it don't delete the entry from the actual map okay and java don't allow allow garbage collector to claim this object in spite of my order that k1 is equal to null but if i have chosen here we cache map then what could happen okay so try to let me run it so it is saying finalize method is called and it is giving me one so i hope you understand some important point about this thing so such type of question i mentioned here into my cheat sheet so i request you uh to go through it and if you find some any doubt you can ask me there's something called sorted map okay uh what is sorted map sorted map is a class or interface okay it's a interface like if you go into a random uh interview they can ask you how to create the object of sorted map so you can tell him sir sorted map is a uh, like interface i cannot create the object but if i want to use sorted map i can use something called tree map because tree map indeed is a implementation of sorted map okay makes sense Are you there, guys? Yes. So yeah. identity hash map is it in Java eight or it's there in previous? It's mode? a older. It's a older. It's a very older concept. Uh, okay. Let me let me show you some diagram. I think this diagram I've shown you earlier also. So this is nothing new. Let me share this diagram to you. Where it is? Yeah. So uh, Abrar, if you see here, uh, this is the original diagram which I shown you before a few days uh, back. so this is the diagram it's mentioning map and you see here hm means uh, hash map and linked hash map this is the normal thing which we discussed last time so these all things are there uh, since uh, java 1.4 if i'm not wrong uh, okay there's something called weak hash map which i'm talking right now there's something called identity hash map okay so which i told you little bit so these are the older thing nothing to do with java 8 okay in java 8 we have uh, some concurrency improvement in collection that i will discuss separately with you okay for that we have to wait little bit on uh, uh, multi threading so let me cover that and then i can cover uh, the java it enhancement into the collection but actually major enhancement is done in java 5 okay we call it java util concurrency collection which still i have not covered so don't worry i will cover it so by the way these are older collection then there is something called sorted map 
okay so sorted map is a interface okay which is not a class as i told you people can ask you the question how to create the object of sorted map you can tell him sir i cannot create because this is an interface if you still want to use sorted map better you should create the object of tree map okay okay All right and there is another improvement a uh, navigatable hash map let me show you okay so for example if i go here navigatable map this is also an interface which was added in java 1.6 okay i hope my clip side is not shared to you so uh, so by the way this uh, navigatable hash map it was introduced in java 1.6 does it make sense to you but other collection was older okay and in fact there is other older category of the collection uh, like dictionary okay so dictionary is not an interface actually this is a very confusing question for the interview people saying that dictionary is a uh, interface it's a abstract class okay and there is a older older collection which we should not use because of performance region that is called uh, something called hash table okay and it is also uh, inherited by some class that is called priority but these are all legacy classes uh, you should know little bit about it but you are not uh, Uh, yeah, these are threads, but very poor in performance. Okay, yeah. so rather than using hash map in Java five, they given us something called concurrent hash map. Okay, and Abrar just wait for uh, wait for multi-threading topic discussion, and then I will discuss concurrent enhancement in collection. Okay, does it make sense? Yes. Okay, so if we go back to, to the Eclipse ID. Right, uh, where is that? Okay, so I was talking about navig navigatable map. This is a very interesting, uh, uh, you can say, interface which add lots of interesting methods into the map. Okay, uh, where it can be used, I will give you some idea. But before that, you should know a little bit about sorted map. So I'm not running the code. I'm just explaining. If it is okay to you, that's enough. Otherwise, I will show uh, that code running. But I hope these are very simple concept. You should able to understand it. So what is the use of sorted map? Okay, let me tell you. So let's say you have a map and having some key and value. Okay, you have some key and value. Let's say one zero one. This is the key and values a one zero three values b. And let's say uh, somebody is interested to know uh, what is the first key. Okay, what is the first key? What is the last key? So what is the first key of that map? One zero one. What is the last key of that map? One one three six. Okay, what is the head map? Let's say if somebody asking me what is head map one zero seven. That means. he is interested about all these uh, all these keys which are before 107 okay does it make sense to you right okay better i should show you this code uh, if i have uh, written something here okay i need to type uh, so let me explain you okay so as i told you tree map is a class which implement those two interface okay one is sorted map so i'm explaining you something about sorted map so what is the use of sorted map that is the question for that i have to type little bit okay i thought i have a piece of code which i paste and run it <laughs> but anyway import java dot So I can use tree map. Okay, let's say I'm using something in teaser. So today I thought of multi-threading, but I hope uh, it's okay. So this is there. This should be tree map. Okay, so now I'm interested to say about something. M dot put. Okay, M dot put. Okay, so I can put here, and in fact there are some new method which are added, and these methods are there uh, since Java eight. Okay, so you can ignore uh, something that is mentioned here, default method. So right now I don't want to mess with Java eight. Once you understand this concept. 
then we'll do that don't worry about it so i wanted to run the same example so that it can give the same output which we are looking for okay i okay so what i should have here okay let's say key uh, key is 101 let's say value is let's say a so i'm just giving the same value so that i can explain you the same example Okay, even if you don't put into the sorted order, it is automatically sorted. That's why I'm, I'm taking in the sorted order because you are using tree map and as you know, tree map uh, put the value into the sorted order. So you don't have to sort it initially. Uh, let's say this is D and uh, we have 125, 36. And there's a very good book if you are looking for a uh, data structure book that is called Shom series. Okay, and that is all practical data structure which was related to Java. Okay, last week I was re-reading re that book and I found lots of interesting interview questions. So you can uh, refer that book. Let's say we can in ask some interesting question. Okay, let me cheat here this thing. So we have method like this. We can ask something called uh, first key. Let's say I can say here m dot, okay, uh, first key, right? I can ask the method like sys out m dot last key, last key. I hope you remember the concept of entry, but we are not interested about the entry. You can also say something like this uh, head map. So these are very interesting method, uh, which we can use depending on the requirement. Uh, okay, head map. Okay, so let's say if I'm looking for head map 107, right? So what's the meaning of this? Okay, the meaning is that if you are writing 107 and let's say you have element like uh, 101, 3 and uh, uh, okay, and 104, I think I missed one entry. Okay, leave it, it doesn't matter. So if I run it, what should happen? Or let me put more things here. Okay, there's a head map, there's something called tail map right tail map says out m dot there's something called sub uh, sub map okay that means say portion of the map let's say i can look for a portion of the map from 103 to let's say 125 so let me try to run it and see what is the output it is producing i think my mouse is not working correctly today so anyway, so let me try to run it. Let's. So what's the meaning of this, right? So let's say if you are asking here, it was you are just asking what is the first key, what is the last key? It is giving the right answer. So if we see this output, 101, 103, what's the meaning of this? Uh, we are just asking the map, hey map, uh, what is your head map? That means the keys before, before 107. So it will give you this answer. If you ask him, what is the tail map? Okay, so in tail map, just remember one thing. It will include 107 also. So it will give you 107, 125, 136. Okay. Are you there? Yeah, yeah. Continue. Okay. Any question? No. Okay. So I was just telling you what is the use of this, uh, this guy, uh, uh, which is provided in Java, uh, you can say, uh, that is called... Okay, so what is that called? That's called sorted man. So I'm just revising uh, what you can do here. I think some more guys have joined. Hi, Avi. Are you there? Hello? Yeah. Avi? Hello. Okay, so yeah, Avi, hi. you are late. Hi, Raj. Yeah, hi. So, let, yeah, uh, yeah. so uh, right now I'm just uh, reminding what we are just doing. I've given you some cheat sheet, if you remember. The title was discussion on Java collection. So we are just going through some important question which was mentioned in this cheat sheet. Okay, so I just discussed something about weak hash map, identity hash map, something uh, which is very important like sorted map. And by the way, sorted map is an interface. Okay, so I've just discussed about this. There's something called tree map. Okay, uh, tree map is also very important. We have seen tree map last time. 
and you should remember if you are using tree map and your keys are user defined key you should not forget to implement what comparable otherwise you will get some errors so this thing we have discussed last time but uh, i'm just reminding you have a chance to go through it like uh, there's a mention of array versus array list you know performance difference are there which when which need to be used when okay so you can go through it let me see if i find any interesting information uh, there's interesting information which you should know like how array list work internally okay so if you create array list let me give a very simple questions to you right okay so so i'm title uh, this this thing as a basic question so this is a very basic question on array list okay so people can ask you which kind which code is better let's say if i'm saying a list of let's say integer is equal to new integer so i'm taking integer and let's say i'm passing a values uh, okay so i have to, okay i'm not using integer but i'm doing here so i have to say here new array list okay so i can create a array list without passing a size okay let's say my requirement is that i want to create an array of size and i i have a guess that uh, at least i am going to put 20 element into that so can you tell me is it is it a good way to create a array list or is it a better a, a better way to create a array list if you need 20 then you can di directly pass 20 directly yeah pass yeah. The size. yeah yeah you're right because if if you don't pass anything by default the size could be 10 okay so if you have a size equal to 10 which is by default and you have a anticipation that you may need at least 20 element or let's say you have anticipation because let's say you need at least 50 element so what is going to happen okay uh, because you should know array list internally is a growable array and the performance may be affected because initially initially array list start with a modest size equal to 10 okay after the modest size 10 it will apply some formula okay so what is the formula uh, last size plus 3 by 2 plus 1 this is the formula so if the initial size was 10 so next time what is going to happen 3 plus okay 10 plus 3 by 2 plus 1 so if you calculate it what is coming here it is comes to be 16 okay so first time it was taken 10 next time it goes to 16 and then because you have anticipation that it is must have uh, around 50 element at least so next time again it need to regrow and it will become what next time 16 plus 3 by 2 plus 1. So these are very small questions, but of course, even a small thing hit the performance. So if you do here, uh, okay, so what is the meaning of this thing here? It should be uh, 3 by 2, okay, is I'm doing some wrong calculation here. So uh, because, okay, yeah, actually I'm doing wrong. It should be something like this, not 3 by 2. It should be, it should be L, okay, so let me correct my formula. It should be then 10. So what is the value here now? 10 plus 10 by 2 plus 1. So it counts to be 16. Next time, it would be, it would be how much? 16 by 2, how much it is? 8 plus 1. Okay, so what is going to happen? 9 and it becomes 25. So I hope you understand what I'm just trying to explain you. Okay, so if you have anticipation that, okay, your array list have, may have minimum this size requirement, you should pass the initial size. Another thing I've already explained you, that of course error list have a very poor performance if you are a, if you are adding element uh, in beginning or in between okay but if you are doing random search definitely performance of error list is better so all these questions i mentioned here into the collection discussion i hope you will go through it and explore a little bit more okay same things i mentioned something about uh, cursors and i think we have discussed this cursor long back what is enumeration what is iterator and all those things okay Beside that, if I found anything new, I think we have not discussed a very important topic that is called generics. Have we discussed that topic? No. Okay. Okay. So let me discuss something on the generics also because uh, that's an important topic. Uh, okay. Let's see. Okay. So we have, uh, first of all, we have to understand what is generics, right? So generics actually was a topic which was added in Java 1.5. Okay. Genrex was added in Java 1.5. So what is the purpose of Genrex? Actually, purpose of Genrex is type safety. Okay. So one thing you should remember 
okay whenever you are using collection we always using is something called angular bracket kind of thing i can let's say if i have java dot util we always used to say something like this let's say list string okay s is equal to new array list right and we can pass some uh, type here and in fact in java 7 you can use something called diamond operator that means in java 7 we don't have to provide anything to our right hand side even if you left it a blank it will work okay anyway but let's say if i'm not applying generics then what 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 going to happen what is the side effect of it let's say if i'm not using generics here so you see here my clip side is showing me some yellow it's saying that array list is a raw type reference to generic type error list should be parameterized okay this is the message coming here so uh, that means uh, java is discouraging us to use generic uh, use collection without generics but let's say if i use it what, what's going to happen here the problem is that it, i can add any kind of element okay i can add an element here let's say foo okay i can uh, add an element let's say something here new or let's say if i create a class here quickly let's say we have a class called book so I can also add a object of book here, right? I can add as dot add and I can add date here. The problem is that I can add any kind of element here, but the problem is that when I get the element from this error list, it is very scary because I don't know what is there at what position. And I have to use lots of typecasting, lots of, uh, uh, you can say instance of, and the code become buggy. Okay, so if, if we have, to restrict the type of data, we can use something called generics. Okay, so this is a very simplistic explanation. I will give you some real life example. Let me first explain you the basic fundamental. But if I say something like this, let's say if I say here in teaser, what's the meaning of this? We are saying to Java, hey Java, this collection can only have in teaser. So what is the problem here? What's the good thing here? We are getting the compilation error. Compiler don't allow me to enter anything which is not in teaser. But now I can say here, as dot add okay i can say here four last time i think somebody have asked me what is the meaning of auto boxing unboxing so i can explain you this concept here also if you are passing four in fact you're not passing in teaser four because in collection you cannot pass primitive you have to pass object so when you are passing four here java is going to automatically wrap in with the wrapper okay with the wrapper of integer anyway so this is how you can add only integer you're not allowed to add some some junk data here but hold down right there's a very important thing if you refer any books they tell you one warning about generics the warning is that generics is type erased is type erased if i can write the spelling correct okay so generics is type erased what it means have you heard this statement somewhere guys avi no Okay, uh, so if you see here, uh, not a big issue, uh, that's okay, it's a very simple concept. Uh, Genrix is type erased, that means, let me explain you. Let's say if you are writing a source code, so what is the name of your source code, let's say a.java, then what is going to happen, definitely you will compile your code and it become a.class. And then you give this code to JVM, okay, so that it can be run, okay. It, you can give it to JVM. So when you run this command, that is called Java C, that means you are invoking the compiler. So whenever we read this statement that Genrix is type erased, it means that the information of Genrix was evaporated after your code was compiled. Let me repeat. What's the meaning of Genrix is type erased? That means the information of Genrix was erased once your code was compiled. That means bytecode don't have any information of Genrix. That means your JVM is ignorant about Genrix. He don't know anything about Genrix. That means generic information is not available at runtime. Okay, guys, do you understand what I've just mentioned here? Yes. <coughs> okay. So what is the consequences of it? What is the consequences of it? If generic information is not available at runtime, consequences is that, okay, it never mix. Okay, I never take wine, uh, by the way, but I'm giving example. Okay, never mix, uh, let's say, like uh, wine with milk. You can mix uh, a, uh, m a wine with water, but never mix, mix with milk because it is not compatible with the milk. 
I mean to say the same thing here. Okay, what what I'm trying to give example to you never mix uh, Java. Okay, generic code with non-generic code. So what I've just mentioned here, you should never mix Java generic code with non-generic code. Okay. Otherwise, if you mix it, you could have some undesired behavior, which you never predict correctly sometimes. So what I mean to say, but sometimes we have to do it actually, what happens? Let's say if you are maintaining a project and somebody have written that project old API, which is in Java 1.4. In Java 1.4, we don't have generics. Okay. It was introduced in Java 1.5. So let's say you are very unfortunate guy and you are maintaining a project and currently you are using Java 1.8, but you have to call a library, which is using Java 1.4. So God bless you. <laughs> I mean to say, you have to be careful. Let me tell you what can happen if you do call a Java 1.4 code, which is not using generic while Java 1.8 code use generic. Let me give an example to you so that you understand what I'm trying to explain you. Right now, this question might come to your mind. Why generics information is only type erase? Why it is not available to JVM? Because if it is available to JVM, then Java could be the better language. What do you think? Okay. So, uh, so you you can uh, think like this: if uh, if the information of generics is available at runtime, that the in this case JVM design would be very complicated and uh, java people have to do a hard work okay but that is the one reason other reason is that if they do that thing then all the older code which is already running on some server might be broken so that's why they have given this indication that we are gonna to put generics only to the type uh, for the type safety it should not be available to jvm okay so if you see here so let's say i'm adding some integer here right my mouse is troubling me too much <laughs> so i will change it next time so uh, so i have a list here i'm adding some element here let's say i'm calling a method that is called uh, a strain method okay let's say it is written uh, in older language okay that is in older version sorry java 1.4 so it was written in java 1.4 let's say i'm calling a library method which was written in java 1.4 and i have to pass a uh, pass a list here okay list a list of string of course in this case i have to say something like this i should say something string isn't it i should say something like this right uh, what's happening here uh, okay is not applicable to the list in teaser. oh sorry yeah so that should be in teaser okay thanks for uh, helping me so if you see here it is compiling but let's say I'm an unfortunate engineer and this code is written in Java 1.4. You can visualize. Okay. And at that time, I don't have generic. So it should be like this. Now, let's say I'm calling this code. So of course, compiler is warning me that you should not do it. It could have some, uh, some side effect. I say it's okay. I, I cannot do anything here. So, but what is happening here? Because, you know, generics do not support polymorphism. This you should also remember. So I'm assigning. I'm assigning the reference of this list into a list which is not supporting generics here. Now, because generics information is not available at runtime, so now I can also say like this, add new, or let's say I can say here new string, or let's say if I simply write here foo here. So you can see here, the purpose of generics was defeated. Do you not agree with me? Yeah. What was the purpose of generics? That it should provide the type safety of the code. Where is the type safety? So that's why I'm always say one thing in the computer science. Okay, we, this is a very important rule. We should remember a gigo, garbage in, garbage out. Okay, so by the way, if what happened, let's say if I'm running this code and I'm saying something like this, uh, what I should say here for uh, what I should say here, integer i, and then I can pass here s, and let's say if I'm doing sysout, sysout i, and if I run it, what is going to happen? It will give me exception at runtime. Okay, so it is giving me class cast exception because I cannot convert a string into integer. Do you understand that thing? So that's why I was saying, so, uh, so I mean, you should never mix a wine with milk. Of course, I never take wine. I'm just giving example. 
okay so uh, so i mean to say never mix a uh, non generic code with generic code if you have to mix you have to be very 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 careful okay okay other thing is that why it shows class cast exception yeah because if you guess here so this is the question and uh, this is a easy but let me explain you uh, it is giving me class cast exception so when abrar we get class cast exception if you know let's say if i'm trying to convert a cat into dog right yeah so if i'm trying to convert cat into dog my jvm is shouting on me how hell you are trying to convert a, to a cat into dog they are incompatible okay they are not compatible they are not comparable kind of okay so it just like this that uh, my my jvm is saying you are trying to convert a string into integer which is not which is not that's why it is giving me that let's say i am trying to compare i am trying to compare a teacher with accountant should it be done or should not be done no it shouldn't be yeah so if i try to compare a teacher with the accountant i should get a common sense error that you are com you are comparing incompatible uh, classes you should compare a professor with the another professor i hope it answer your question okay so if you see here uh, we are trying to understand some uh, uh, nut and bolts of generics okay the other example of the generics as i told you generics do not support polymorphism okay generic uh, don't support so it means that let's say if you are trying to write something like this i hope you understand this behavior so let me make this comment so i mean to say generic do not support polymorphism it means that uh if you write like this let's say you are write like this number what is number by the way number is a abstract class and let's say if i write here integer will it work it will not work because generic do not support polymorphism and why it do not support polymorphism because generic information is not available at run time okay but if we are using array you know array support polymorphism okay and let's say if i am saying something like this number i can create a pointer of something like this is equal to new integer will it work let's say if i say here four it should work that means array support polymorphism but generics do not support polymorphism this is a very famous fresher interview question why okay because java have a run time safety for array but java don't have any run type safety for uh, what is this guy uh, generics because generics do not available at run time okay so these are some uh, common question i am going little bit uh, a kind of introduction session but i advise you to refer this topic uh, from a book that is called kathy sara scjp i hope you if you know about that book so you can go to the generics from that book that's a great book to have knowledge on this topic okay so generics do not support polymorphism generics is actually compile time funda it is not available to jvm at run time so you have to be cautious if you are using generics with a non generics code this is what i told you from last uh, 10 or so minute okay but let me tell you what is the real purpose of using generics because i'm just telling you what is use of generics but not the real purpose so i have a example let me try to explain you so what is the example i should take another uh, file because and i hope you are referring my code example i am also sending the code examples to you people okay need of generics okay let's say two so i'm just creating the second program so that if you refer it you should not have any difficulty so what is my requirement uh, let's say i have a requirement i i want to i want to store uh, what i should say water in a glass okay so i have a requirement i want to create a software for some uh, cold drink company and they ask me rajiv i want to create a glass which can store the water i say okay let me create a class like this i can create a class called glass okay and uh, what i should say here a uh, public let's say water store and get let's say so i'm saying something like this okay i should create a class called water so 
so do you like water guys we like water when we are thirsty isn't it otherwise we may like cold drinks <laughs> okay so we like water when we really need it okay anyway just a funny statement here so now what i'm gonna to do here i'm just passing a water here okay so what is the requirement that i want to have a glass which can store water and uh, i can i can fire a method from here let's say w dot what taste and i can say here return water so that means this is a glass okay what's the problem if i can types correct there's a point okay so this is the glass which is a reservoir that means i can store and of course i can get water whenever i need a, a, a to sip the water anyway this is what i thought and i code like this and i was very happy i created a water object let's say water new water so i created the water object and now i'm saying now i'm saying uh, hey glass okay what i should say so i can also say w is equal to glass i have to create the object of glass also okay so now glass is equal to new glass so i'm creating the glass and now i'm saying uh, water is equal to glass dot uh, store and get so i'm passing the water and expecting after drinking some water i should have less water okay i was very happy and my code was working okay not a issue but now my manager says okay this glass can also store juice okay so now i have a problem okay so now earlier i have a uh, now my mouse is very crappy today so i have a class called water now i created a class that is called juice okay so i have a class so you can use interface for a test method yeah we can we can use a uh, interface i'm coming on that right i'm i'm t i will tell you what is the better way right so i'm saying okay so this is what we have done now the problem is that if i go for this juice of course i need to change the code which is not advisable is that okay or not you are you are thinking in correct way right but sometime interface we have to think beyond the interface right that i am coming here so we have to pass a juice and then what happens stop working for the water or i have a possibility that i can have multiple method here one is store and get uh, water one is store and get juice it looks ridiculous okay but now i can think like this rather than having this thing i can also write a object yes or no isn't it okay so i can do something like this now of course this code will not work i have to apply type casting because object do not support test method isn't it right so we have to force a type cast here i can say here uh, what i can say here water make sense right so what is happening here uh, still it is not working uh, i think what i should do here is i am applying in the correct way or not okay so this is what i need to say here now the compiler is shouting me here raj what you are doing okay it is not returning so i have to apply the cast here okay and of course if i'm parting, passing water here it will work but what happen if i pass juice here this will fail okay this will fail right what to do here okay what i can do here of course i need i should go for a interface right i can go for a interface let's say i can create a interface that is for liquid okay i can uh, have a, a method called liquid and uh, let's say what i should write here let's say taste method right so now i have a taste method i can say here water implement liquid right and of course i have to pass i have to use the same thing with the juice okay makes sense here now what i can do here uh, i can i can use here something called generics okay so you can you can apply generics like this okay you can apply generic like this and then you can say here t and then you can say here t okay and let's say you can say here t dot taste okay so now uh, what is happening here it is shouting and we can return here so i can i can i can say here implement okay 
you can say extend extend a liquid or oh, what is what is the interface I've given here yeah liquid right so if you see here uh, okay it should be W or let me make it T right and uh, what is that I can run T so you may be wondering what the hell uh, I'm doing today and what's the meaning of this okay don't worry let me explain you till now what I've done here what was our requirement we have started with a very nominal statement that I wanted to store uh, water in a glass right let me sip a water <laughs> so I was telling you uh, uh, so but our design was not working so as uh, Avi have suggested me I have gone for an interface right but now I'm saying here I'm saying here uh, class water is there and class juice is there so I've goes for something called a uh, template class right so template class is also a very interesting thing for example I can give you another real life example let's say you're creating a link list okay and you know link list have two part one is data one is uh, next part let's say if I'm creating a link list manually myself and I'm storing only in teaser but now my manager say hey Rajiv I need to store uh, string also I need to store employee record also is I'm gonna to create a thousand kind of list no okay so what is the use of generics it's like C++ only in C++ we have something called template classes okay so what is the use of template classes when we have the same algorithm okay only data type is changing when we have same algorithm only data type is changing then we can think why not we apply generics okay so I'm saying here class class T extend liquid okay it means that uh, first of all you should understand although liquid is an interface isn't it can you see here interface liquid is an interface okay are you there guys yeah okay so uh, liquid is interface but still I can I should apply a keyword called extend so extend means is something to do with liquid okay let me repeat here what's the meaning of T extend liquid T extend liquid means that you can use this class for replacing T where T must have something to do with liquid that means I, I can pass any class here which have implemented liquid but still you should not apply keyword implement here you should always apply keyword here extend do you understand the meaning of this so we can use that uh, the okay if you see here generics can't use uh, extend no 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 I'm, I never say that Gendix cannot use extend mm -hmm. I'm saying here we are not using polymorphism you are misunderstood Abrar no. I say oh, that okay no no forget about uh, let me remove it okay let me remove it if I save it will it give me a compilation mm -hmm. error answer is yes because what is T here Abrar T is a placeholder yeah. okay T is a placeholder T means type okay T means type here so we are saying to compiler hey compiler I want to create a class I don't know what is the data type I should pass it right now so that's why I'm giving a generic type called T yeah. okay but generic type T don't know what is the taste method that's why I'm getting an error in line number 24 can you see that yes yeah. okay yeah. now I have to give some extra information to the compiler I'm telling to the compiler if I'm using extend which I have written here now if I'm saying and you see error have gone away on line number 24 so I'm yeah. telling to the compiler, hey compiler, this glass should be working for a, a type T where type T has something to do with a, a liquid. You read it, you read it like this. Yeah. Okay. Hey Java, okay. This glass can store T where T has something to do with liquid just focus on the word something to do yeah. we are not saying okay even you can say like this extend doesn't mean inheritance here exactly okay right if you see here again I'm repeating liquid is an interface yeah. right but we are not okay implement keyword never work here if you try to work it it will give a slap uh, to you right let me do this <laughs> okay so what is going to happen it, it will give me compilation error because implement is not the correct keyword to use here so what is the advantage of this whole exercise the whole exercise advantage is that 
now I can store anything in the glass which is a liquid. Okay, let me do that. I can say, uh, okay, W is equal. Okay, let's say I should create a glass. So how I should create a glass now? I can create a glass G is equal to new glass. Okay, so now it is giving me a, a yellow because you need to understand because you have created glass as a generic class. That's why you have to pass here, let's say water. Okay, you have to say something like this. Do you understand this thing? Now, what is the advantage? Now I can say here W is equal to G dot what? Okay, store and get. Now you don't have to apply any, any unnecessary type casting. And of course, your code will never fail at runtime because you are giving safety of your code, safety to your code. Let's say rather than storing water, can I store something else? Of course, uh, this glass is used to store water. Okay. And the same glass, okay, what I should do here, I can also use like this rather than having water, I can also use here liquid. Can you understand? It will also work like this, but what is the problem here? Uh, okay, it is failing. Cannot convert from liquid to water. Okay. Of course, in this case, this should also be liquid because as I told you, generics do not support polymorphism. So in this case, this example can work with water also and this example can work with what? Juice also. Are you understanding my point? Yes. Okay, so what is the takeaway from this example? When I should go for generics? Whenever your logic is same, only data type is different. You see here, the store and get logic is same. Okay, no matter whether I'm storing juice into that or I'm storing water into that logic remains same. That's why I thought about a mixture of interface as well as a, what? Genlex here. But there's a problem. Let's say my, my one colleague is very smart and he come up with the idea to disturb me and he created a class called Petrol. What is the spelling? I hope it is a correct spelling. I don't know. <laughs> so Petrol sound, <laughs> who knows how Petrol uh, taste? I don't know. Is that okay or not? So he was actually uh, planning to disturb me. So he created a class called petrol and now saying that take a sip of petrol. <laughs> so will, it, will this code example work in this case? What is going to happen? Although this is a very funny example. So let's say I'm passing a petrol here. So what is going to happen? Okay, liquid petrol. So it looks very silly code here. I can. Uh, store the petrol in a glass, which is a drinking hotel glass, and I can also sip it and store it and get it. It looks very uh, awkward. Okay, so glass is not there to store petrol at least. But why it is working? Because petrol was a liquid. Okay, do do you people understand this example or not? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so how to solve this mystery? I can create something like this now. I have, I can create another interface. Let's say interface drinkable. Okay. Let's say this is a marker interface, don't have anything. Although it look a wrong design actually, I thought the taste method should be there in drinkable, isn't it? And liquid should have method, what is the viscosity? I know some physical physics term, if I'm not wrong. Yes or no, viscosity is there. Okay, so I can have a uh, term called viscosity or density in the liquid, but drinkable must have a taste method. I hope you can change the design yourself. Okay, but I'm just going to explain you the concept. Let's say I know petrol is not drinkable, but water and juice is. So I can say here, implement liquid, comma, comma, what I can say here? I can say here drinkable. So what is the meaning of this? Now I can say here. Now you see here, what changes I have to do here? I can say here T extend liquid M percent. I can apply here M percent. Okay, and I can pass this parameter. So what's the meaning of this? Now you see here this code break. It's a good thing or bad thing? It's a good thing. Now somebody tried to sip petrol from my glass. He should be slapped. Why hell he's trying to do that? And what is the meaning of this syntax? We say that this, this method or this class is a generic class for any type T which, which have something to do with what? Liquid as well as what? Drinkable. Okay. Do you understand this point or not? Yeah. So now we can't pass an interface on the left side, right? Yeah, we can still pass. We can still pass, but petrol is not allowed. We can pass uh, here something called water because water follow both the things. So here in general, okay. glass liquid. Okay. 
okay so in this case uh, we cannot uh, okay so if you see here what i can say here uh, of course you uh, let me try to do this both okay so we can uh, okay but the problem is that uh, this is not allowed at least in the declaration so what i can do here if i leave it uh, okay what it is saying incorrect number of argument cannot be parameterized by this okay what's the problem here mm. or i can apply some wild card if it were but it works in the wild card it doesn't work there okay let me write here something here extend right but now this will not work okay incorrect number of argument uh okay question mark extend liquid and drinkable okay so it don't allow me here so problem bounce back somehow but if i apply question mark but problem is not solved not saying method store and get of type is not applicable to the argument liquid so the problem is that uh we are getting the problem with the return type can you see here yes hmm? because uh this this ampersand sign is applicable to this definition but it is not allowed when we are declaring the type of pointer and if i see if i put a question mark here by the way what is the meaning of question mark i will explain you in a minute uh in fact there are two thing extend and super okay so that's the some meaning here so now it's working but saying that you don't have right to get w okay yeah actually why this problem is happening uh, i don't have to say uh, liquid here i have to say here water only okay but still this example is working here or not question mark yes. is like anything you can pass. question mark is, yeah question mark is like anything but uh, still cannot convert from liquid to water okay liquid to water mm okay so i'm getting in this mess okay so now the problem is that while i'm ret returning then i have a problem and this is actually i'm doing ridiculous because one thing i read which i forget that you should avoid returning generics because it can give you some bugs which i am getting right now okay so if i have not written the uh, written the t from here i could be safer okay do you understand this thing yeah okay so now uh, because what is the problem i am getting here i have created a water okay now i am passing water into that and retrieving into this and i am using some question mark here and uh, what i am trying to tell you to the java okay so if i say question mark extend uh, object it is same as just saying question mark so right now what has come to my mind that i am in a mess because i am returning t and t is little complicated to be handled like this if i am not written this t then the code will work okay so let me think on this i will try to revisit this how to solve this mystery but anyway have you got some idea how this generics works and how it could help you yes okay one thing i want to explain you this question mark extend object what is the meaning of this syntax and uh, what are the other uses of this so let me make this comment and i will try to think on this uh come back to you but i think one thing comes to me uh, from the common sense point of view i uh, don't ever return generic type okay it is a mess so i remember i read it somewhere on the stack overflow so uh, or we can see it but at least i should able to explain you what is the meaning of this question mark extend object in fact there are two syntax okay if there are two syntax let me write it one syntax is question mark extend something and another syntax is okay uh question mark super something okay so what is the use of these two syntax let me try to explain you by example okay need of 
question mark super okay so let me give you another example so that you can understand this thing and this example is straight from uh, the great book uh, that is scjp from kathy sara i hope you have referred that book so let me use something like this and that is one of the best uh, material for a scjp certification if you plan to do okay so what what i should do okay what i'm doing here i'm explaining you some example which further clear you when we go for these kind of uh, generics or oh, sorry question mark something which i was using here so let me use here uh, we have a array list of integer and let me add here m dot add i'm adding some integer let's say 22 m dot add right so i am having some integer okay and i i my manager told me rajiv just write a method that is called print all okay we should able to take m here and should able to print it so i'm going to use the eclipse uh, id to generate this method okay. i can remove this private so what i'm going to do here i just want to print them let's say if i want to use something like this in teaser i and then i can say here m okay why i'm using m symbol i don't know so it should be array or something so i'm just sys out i okay so my code works fine right but what is happening after a few minutes my new requirement comes okay and uh, my requirement is saying rather than taking integer this time you take uh, something called double okay so i thought why not i take double and then i'm using double here and because we are lazy we have to type only one side in java 7 as we progress we are becoming intelligent lazy people okay so laziness is not bad if we apply from intelligent point of view so i'm having some double values now what i need to do okay i have to define a, another method that is called print all what i should say here double because you see here i cannot say print a uh, print all and i can pass m2 here what is going to happen if i say it compiler is slapping me compiler is saying hey raj the method print all list integer is type neat is not applicable to the argument list double he is saying because compiler is stopping me jvm have no role right now because program is giving me compilation error not a runtime error so compiler is suggesting me hey raj i cannot do this because they are not compatible so what i what is the only solution i have okay i will try to create a method right i will try to create a method now i have another slap okay why i am getting the problem here okay this is a very interesting problem you cannot solve it if you cannot think something more in generics okay now compiler is suggesting me if i put a cursor here eraser of method print all is same as another method of type need of q and super so actually compiler is giving me error he is saying that generics is a compile time funda what happened raj if they are going to replace or they are going to lose at run time because at run time we don't have this information are you understanding what is the problem avi are you there yes sir yeah i'm listening okay Ravi, are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the problem is that because uh, uh, this uh, this was type raise. Okay. JVM have no information and compiler saying, hey, what happen if uh, you are just defining the same method like this in the class? It's it's not allowed. You are not doing overriding. If you are doing overriding, it should be in two separate classes. Okay. So I have to think a lot. Okay. What I can do here? My only purpose. So I have only one solution. I have to define another method for what? Print all uh, double. okay i can define another method print all double but why i am doing it you see my data is same okay sorry my data is different my algo of printing of data is same isn't it okay so whenever my data is differ only algo of uh, uh, sorry my, my algo is same only data is differ i should think about uh, generics in intelligent way okay otherwise also if i define multiple method like this it is a violation of a dry principle dry means what yourself okay i hope you know so what is the solution solution is you can apply intelligent uh, intelligent uh, generics intelligently like this let me tell you if you see here 
we have a uh -huh. base class okay so if you see here we have a uh, base class number by the way number is not an interface it's an abstract class it's an abstract class right guys are you there yes yeah. okay i thought some okay so if you see here i was drawing like this we have number so actually i thought that today i could cover start multi threading because i forget that we have a topic that is called generics anyway so i can have something called integer okay i could have something called double and you know how many kind of wrapper are there i think there are six wrapper classes okay right so all these six wrapper classes okay out of those six wrapper classes only one do not implement number this is a very common interview question there is a one wrapper classes that is called character and character wrapper classes have nothing to do with what number okay so even people can fool you like this and you am b r okay okay people can fool you like this will it compile or not they can say like this class okay class character a character extend number is this correct or not you should tell him that this is not correct okay in fact this is not the question people ask they can ask you question like this if uh okay number is a class or an interface number is a abstract class okay abstract okay so people can ask you he has created a character let's say character c is equal to new character okay character is a class okay this is a wrapper class to wrap the character so people can ask ask you this very famous interview question c instance of instance of number okay so will it will it return true will it return false what is the answer false so okay but be careful what is going to happen if i type it okay so i think one of the best approach to learn the programming is to think yourself as a compiler okay are you understanding what i am saying okay you should start thinking that you are a compiler and what happen if you are inputting a program okay so if i say here if character instance of instance of number so what is going to happen it will not compile itself forget about the runtime error of, of forget about the false or true so why it is not compiling because compiler know that character have nothing to do with number so compiler can check it at compile time why this uh, why this problem should be sent to jvm okay so you should know in which case it should not compile in which case it should give you a uh, true false or something like this let's say if i have some somebody is asking like character rather than character if it was integer let's say if i am saying something like this so by the way i don't want to diverge but because this is a interview question so i'm just discussing with you people okay let's say we pass here 55 so if somebody say here i of course it will compile you should know in which case it will compile in which case it should not compile anyway leave it so if you understand this that's fine okay let me cut this and paste it here so that you can think on this type of question also again sir i want to prepare for interview preparation in core java what is the best book head first core java or oh, sorry scjp kathi sir okay so we have uh, something like this i was explaining you that i don't want to define multiple methods so what is the solution i have i know whether i have a array list of integer or i have a array list of double they all have something to do with number so i can say something like this question mark extend extend number okay so here it is basically number is a upper bound or of course you have to say rather than uh, integer you can say number so now what is the beauty of this code this code will work for uh, for uh, what what i should say for integer also for double also doesn't matter because this will work let's say if i'm calling it like this print all for m2 what is m2 okay m2 is a list and you can see the compiler what is coming here when i was typing like this okay so what is coming here can you read it question mark extend number what's the meaning of this here Ravi, 
Hi there. Okay, Avi, are you there? I'm there, yeah. Yeah, so what's the meaning of this question mark extend number? So it extends the wrapper class number and then it decides like uh, what num uh, what type of uh, uh, what data type it needs to print. It will print all those. Uh, okay. So let me let uh, me further it's, clarify. It's, it's, yeah, it's kind of a condition checking like whether uh, that particular data type belongs to the uh, category or not. Number yeah, category yes. or not. Yes. Yes. You're, yes. You're right. Perfect. So let me repeat it. Let me rephrase into more easier language. You're you're right, but let me rephrase it again, so that everybody understands. So abrar it means that if you are writing here question mark extend number, we are trying to say that uh, this print all method can accept any m which which have something to do with number. Okay, listen carefully. This print all method can accept any m which have something to do with what number. That means number is upper bound here. Okay. That means if I'm passing a list here uh, and that list is of object, let's say I do something like this. Okay. So I, let's say if I say here object, okay, M3 is equal to new array list. Okay. So if I say something like this and I'm saying here M3 dot m3 dot add let's say new object okay so we are passing some object here can i pass this uh, this thing here m3 will it work it will give me a compilation error because that's why i'm trying to explain you what's the meaning of this question mark extend number so number is upper bound here you can only pass number or subtype of number but you cannot pass upper of number so that's why this is called upper bound So what was T then? T is just a placeholder, nothing like that. We are not using T here. We are using question mark. Question, mean, question mark means what? We don't know what is the data type. But whatever the data type, it must be it must be bounded under number. It must be bounded under number. Okay. And if you know number is a abstract class, and number number is actually inherited from which class? Of course, every class have a mother class in Java that is called what? Object. Isn't it Abra? Yes. So what is the uh -huh. meaning of this? So again, I'm repeating if you are not sure. No, I got it. Okay. So for the placeholder, so, do we need to use only T? T, T. Yes, you're right. So what is the meaning of this? A number is upper bound here. Okay. But now there is an interesting question here. You can only print the list, but you cannot change the list. You're not allowed to do that. Let's say if I try to do something like this, let's say I'm, if I'm adding here, I'm passing M and we know M is of which kind? integer is the integer adding is allowed here or not it's not allowed okay it's not allowed so we can you tell me why it is giving me error if i'm saying like this uh, so it doesn't have a uh, i think internally it doesn't have a uh, future to for uh, us like no the set method no, no, no. I will give a chocolate to you. I will surely mail you in Australia. You're in Australia, right? No. No, no, somewhere no. Uh, there was yeah. some another guy which I'm tutoring nowadays. You are in Chicago, if I'm not wrong. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I will, I will mail a chocolate to you. Just give me the right answer. Yes. Uh, so, uh, print all next. So, the, uh, the class number is a wrapper class. So it does not have a method add. Nahi, 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 no, no, no. By the way, nahi means no in and uh, nahi means uh, nahi is no in Hindi. If you don't know. I'm I'm a Hindi native person. Okay. So it doesn't have a right to add. A... Yeah, yeah. But why? Why you you are going in the right direction? Okay. It. Uh, uh, so okay. at at runtime, uh, there are no wrapper class. So uh, okay. if you use a wrapper class, you cannot add any data or something to the existing no, no, list, no. I guess. No? Abrar was more near. Okay, let me let me solve the mystery. That's not that difficult. Okay, you see here, what exactly you are saying here? 
that you can pass any list which have something to do with number isn't it yes okay so compiler is very sure that it should be subtype of number but java is not very sure at runtime whether it should be integer whether it should be double or whether it should be uh, long or something else let me repeat if we are saying question mark extend number okay compiler knows that only type which can be passed should be subtype of number isn't it yes it could be integer it could be double it could be long but java okay. don't know which which it was when we which are it adding was. it does not know what we are adding yeah yeah yes. yeah and java says if we, if somebody add something else which is not supposed to add again it will give me class class exception so java want to play safe isn't it yes java want to play safe that's why it is giving you a compile time error okay the method of type cap uh, capture blah blah is not applicable to argument sometime so when you yeah please if if you do type casting there uh, can you add that uh, particular that is wrong list? that is wrong that is wrong uh, avi that is a garbage in garbage out because you're not very sure because you can pass any kind of number do you want to add a uh, add a double into a array list which supposed to hold in teaser no you cannot no, add no. that yeah yes you should not add it you can see there's a there's two thing uh, uh, my dear friend there's a one good programming practice and can we do this or not we can do anything okay let's say somebody can go to the uh, 15th floor of a house and jump from there should he do this he, he doesn't do that but <laughs> if you want <laughs> yeah but i'm just, don't take in <laughs> that way yeah. somebody have fed up from the life who can do that but i'm just giving a real life uh, example just to relate that that would be foolish i mean to say yeah. if you want to add anything then we can use list of objects yes 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 now you are going in the right direction uh, but uh, again if, but if you say here object even you are not allowed to change it this is the rule yeah okay because this is the rule java have formulated like this but by the way what is the meaning of this thing now of course we have to say here object okay what is the meaning of this this method become a generic method to print anything okay so java say whatever kind of collection you are passing whether you are passing a employee whether you are passing a salesman i can print this okay and even you know this syntax is very popular avi and uh, rather than using this thing you can even remove this okay you can remove this so see carefully this and this are same okay this and this are same so that means if i'm put, putting only question mark it's just a, a shortcut notation that's by default it takes like an extend yes. object yes 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 so question mark means question mark extend object i hope you understand list t also means object t is a placeholder what do you mean t by a placeholder placeholder means what t can be accompanied by anything but in that case you have to define what is t okay, okay. so normally it's not used here okay so what is the meaning of question mark i'm just telling you what is the meaning of question mark it's just a uh, just the meaning of this it's not a placeholder it's just a restriction okay so that's a uh, that's a meaning of this okay right does it make sense to you yes okay there's another thing let me explain you that also okay need of a question mark and something called uh, uh extend okay and there's something called super okay i think i was explaining extend but anyway let me use something like this super so there are two syntax which i was trying to explain you before start of this uh, discussion there is something called question mark super something so now question mark super something what is the difference between this and uh, what is that question mark extend something so of course you understand little bit on question mark extend something but i am just explaining you what is the use of super uh, so how i can explain you so now so super actually uh, used to define the lower bound let me something like this let's say we have a class called dog and uh, what i should say here song so okay so very funny so we have a uh, dog class now
let's say we say something like this extend okay so what is the difference between street dog and costly dog <laughs> so so if you see here so i'm just defining like this so i can also create a class called yet another So now, so let me create a different kind of dog with sound in different way. Uh, now, what exactly I want to do here? I want to explain you something. The use of uh, super, okay? So. Now, let me use something like this list of. Of course, you should know one thing. If you say here, uh, dog d is equal to new dog. Okay, so if if you sorry array list. So you can create array list like this. What what is happening? This is array list. So I can create array list. So by the way, I'm explaining you something on super. Now. So you should know one thing. You can never say here costly dog. It will never work because I told you it, uh, polymorphism. Yeah, polymorphism is not supported here. But definitely, uh, you can do something like this also. You should never forget this thing. You can say something like this: question mark extend dog. This will work. Please remember this question mark extend dog syntax. Will never work to RHS. It should always work to LHS, left hand side. Okay, this is this is also a good observation. Okay, so let it be dog. So I'm saying something like this. But now what I want to do here, I want to call a method. Okay, do method. I don't know what name I should give here, and I'm passing here D. Okay, so now now what I can do here. Let's say if I say here, question mark super dog. The question the question is that what's the meaning of this, right? So please try to understand. Here we are saying anything which is lower than dog can be added also, right? So what I can do here, I can say here d dot okay add. Now now you see add method is allowed. Okay, can you tell me why this add method is allowed now? Why it was not allowed earlier? And you cannot apply a shortcut like this. This will not work. Okay, so there is no shortcut for super. That shortcut was only for extend. Super so what's the meaning of this? It works only with uh, child classes. Yes, yes, you are right. So here we are trying to say that the uh, you can pass the dog and okay. Let me write it. What we are trying to say uh, here. We are saying to Java. passing dog okay we can pass array that hold any kind of dog okay and adding dog is also allowed why why we can add any kind of dog because this this could be the safe safe operation right so that's the use of super uh, okay one thing is important you have created a list which is supposed to hold dog can you add uh, here costly dog this is my question yes of course because indeed costly dog is a dog don't think it is a polymorphism it's not a polymorphism we are just passing the polymorphic data type into the array or array list okay array list which can hold dog of course that array list can also hold the costly dog but i can never allow to do, write some syntax like this okay this will never work okay i hope you understand something uh, on generics guys yes okay so this is a vast topic even uh, generics of constructor was supported but don't go uh, into that right now at least just start reading it 
I can suggest you, you can go through uh, SCJP Kaitha Sarah book, which I suggested you many times now. And uh, there's a last, there's one chapter whole on this topic. Just go through it. If you have questions, you can come back to me. Uh, there's a very interesting question for you people. Uh, what is the question? The question is that uh, if we create like this, let's say, if we create, if we don't pass any genetics information, what it means? Let's say if I'm saying list L is equal to new list, new array list, let's say. What's the meaning of this? We can pass any element into this list and this was pre Java 1.5 code, isn't it? Yes. My question is that, uh, Abra, what is the difference between these two signatures? Let's say if I mention it object here. So what is the difference between these two things? Okay, here also we can pass any kind of object and here also we can pass any kind of object. Then what is the difference between these two things? You can see here, it is it is not acceptable to Java compiler. Java compiler saying it's a bad code, while Java compiler appreciate this code. Besides that, what is the technical difference between these two things? This is an interview question. Okay, I please try to find out the answer or we discuss in the next session. All right. right? All right. Okay. So now uh, what we should do here. Okay, so we have discussed something on the collection. Uh, I originally thought that we could discuss something on threads. So what's the time? Uh, so we can extend uh, at least a session of 10 minutes and at least start something which I thought of initially to tell you something about threads. Okay, is it allowed? Yes, definitely. <laughs> I should take permission because I know. Uh, see, from my point of view, uh, mm. teaching is more easier than studying. Okay, Avi, my job is difficult or your job is difficult? Tell me. Uh, I think teaching job is difficult then. No, 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 no. Actually, you know, student is doing more difficult job because what I teach you right now, which I already know. Okay. okay. So my job become, you know, when I'm doing difficult job, when I'm studying myself, <laughs> by the way, so I should appreciate you all. Okay, so, uh, so why not we go for more 10 minutes and then we wind up the session, right? Yeah, sure. Okay, so uh, let me make a program. So uh, first of all, um, we are going to do a very uh, important topic that is called threads. Okay, so first of all, if you never have gone through, I can suggest you some uh, some materials for self study. Uh, there is a, go a good book on OS that is called Galvin. I don't know what book you refer in your university. In Indian university, we look, uh, refer a book that is called Galvin Operating System. Okay, Galvin was the author. Uh, here, I think we use uh, Tenenbaums. Uh, okay, Tenenbaums, right? That's yeah. a great book. Right? That's a great book. So anyway, uh, whatever book you refer, uh, that is a Tenenbaum is also in. Even that is a book, a better book than Galvin. Anyway, but what I expect from you people that you should know what the basic idea about the process. What is process? Okay. What is program? Yeah. Okay. What is the difference between process and program? What is difference between uh, process and threads? Thread. If I can write spell correctly. Okay. And then uh, there should be a very important discussion. Uh, what is deadlock and all those things? Yes. What is uh, uh, what is a reader writer problem? Synchronization. Synchronization. So yeah. multi, uh, you should know all these things theoretically. Multiple. Because you know, if I try to cover all these things, I'm good into that, but I don't want to cover it. You understand, right? We don't want to, you can say theoretically, we don't want to go, go there. Uh, and you should also know one thing. Okay, so I assume that you know these prerequisites. If you have any doubt, still I can discuss in next five minutes. Uh, but there's no shortcut, right? So I, I still request you to refer a book. And then if you have doubt, please come back to me. So there's a topic called multi threading. So people always confuse what is multi threading. Okay, so in fact, multi threading is a vast topic. And this topic is divided into two subtopics. Okay. What I'm saying, Avi, multi threading is a vast topic, it is divided into two subtopics. One is called concurrency okay. and one is called parallel processing. Okay. 
so pellet processing is actually recently become very much in demand like you know yeah. uh, something called map and uh, map and reduce hadoop and lots of data cruncher software is coming nowadays isn't it yeah like internal parallel processing or distributed computing it is actually a mixture of parallel processing plus distributed distributed means what if we if we let's say i have uh, 10 lakhs record to be processed and i have five people let's say i am a cpu you are a cpu and i have multiple cpu and i distributed load to multiple cpu that is called distribution of the job and whenever we have a distribution of job to the multiple cpu we are actually using parallel processing okay let's say i am doing different tasks yeah yeah and different tasks and basically that task is not managed on one cpu that is managed on multiple cpu the problem is that most of the books whether we refer tenenbaum or whether we refer uh, galvin which we refer in our indian university most of the book only talk about concurrency okay so i think i have a i have a snapshot let me show you that snapshot okay and then we wind up oh, where is that okay if i can find it just a minute let me find it So just just a minute. Let me share this uh, pic pics with you. So can you see some picture right now? Yeah. Okay, great. So if you see here, uh, what this picture is depicting you, it depicting you the difference between concurrency and parallelism. As I told you, concurrency and parallelism is the branch of what multi-threading, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So what is the how what is the basic fundamental difference between concurrency and parallelism? in concurrency we assume that we have only one cpu and most of the books whether it is galvin and uh, tenenbaum doesn't matter most of the books have all the theory related to one cpu what they say we have a one cpu and we have uh, we have a chunk of the job and it is going to be processed by one cpu okay let's say we consider like this uh, everybody of you let's say me you everybody have one one cpu and our cpu is our brain isn't it so let's say i am teaching you but uh, in your back of mind uh, in back of my mind it is also happening whether my payment check was clear from that person or not so that means i can i can process multiple thing in one time in my brain isn't it yeah so that is example of what concurrency okay let's say you are studying also and taking a, uh, a sip of tea but what is parallelism parallelism is a hypothetical situation in which i have five brain okay and all the brain is doing independent processing so in the parallel processing we have different cpu and different cpus processing different data okay so in the classical multi threading we are actually solving the problem of concurrency okay but actually nowadays we also need something called parallelism right and for parallelism uh, actually java 7 have given a very important algorithm if you know something called fork and join framework Hmm. Okay, so fork and join framework trying which uh, trying which uh, trying to solve which kind of problem? Parallelism. Parallel. Parallelism means we have multiple CPU and we should distribute the load to multiple CPU. Yeah. Okay. While while what you have studied in most of the time we all know thread and runnable, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we we all know how to create the job. Okay. If you refer a great book called Head First, that's a great book to refer basic idea. okay and author have given the analogy that consider a thread and consider a runnable sorry consider a job and consider a worker so whatever we read in uh, most of the uh, college level books we talk about concurrency but don't worry i will also cover a special topic on parallelism so that you should be comfortable in interview to answer such kind of question will it help you definitely yes okay so so just 5 minute let me at least give you some code example so what is the classical way Yeah. So actually, uh, yes. Uh, you want to say something, Abi? No, no, no. Want to share some? Okay. No, no, no. So what I'm saying, concurrency can be further divided into uh, two things. Let me tell you. One is called classical. Classical thread. Oh, sorry. 
okay let me let me share it sorry for that yeah no okay because i don't know why what software the software have some issue because what i personally feel it should switch the screen as soon as i am switching the screen isn't it i don't know it should happen like this so anyway we so i have written webinar before it shared everything pardon uh, a website called webinar software called webinar yeah 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 shared i think everything. Yeah, yeah. This is actually I'm talking about the that's that way only. But leave it. Anyway, we are just getting the session, and uh, we are using some another software. Okay. So anyway, so uh, so Abrar, if you see here, I think uh, Pravi was uh, there. Let me see. Okay. Yeah. So Pravi, are you there? Yeah. Okay. So by the way, we have just uh, talked a little bit about the challenge of multi-threading. I just uh, told you people that multi-threading is there in concurrency and parallel processing. And to solve the concurrency issue, we have two ways to do that. One is classical way. One is a new package which was added into Java 1.5, which is a very important topic. That is called Java Util Concurrency. Okay. So what is Java Util Concurrency? It's a package which was added in Java 1.7. Sorry, 1.5. So what is the difference between classical? Okay, so classic. If something is classical in programming, is a good thing or bad thing? Bad thing. Yes. Let's say you go to a you go to a classical restaurant. It must be a good thing. So in programming, classical is actually of obsolete way. Old fashioned way. Old fashioned. You're right. You're right. So anyway, so if we want to solve the concurrency, we have two way. One is old fashioned way. One is newer way. Of course, we should know both. Okay, so I was trying to draw a diagram, right? So if you see here, we have something like this. Now, so if we if we try to understand parallel processing, we have two ways to solve parallel processing in Java world. Okay, the one is actually fork and join framework. What I say, fork and join okay. from it. Fork and join framework, right? This was actually introduced in Java 1.7. But actually, what's the problem with the fork and join framework? It's a great framework, but actually, it is based on recursive algorithm. And if you try to solve a problem with the fork and join framework, coding become very difficult. Okay, that's why Java 8 have given a very beautiful topic that is called parallel processing. Okay, parallel processing using stream. Using parallel stream, or let me write like parallel stream. Okay, so I'm repeating this. I can simply say here, Java 8 have introduced a topic that is called parallel stream. It, this topic was there in which 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 version? 1.8. I hope you got some basic idea and some prerequisites. I hope you will read it and come back uh, next day with the full energy, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. okay. So I think uh, I think uh, uh, bye for now, right? If you have any question, please ask me. Yeah. Yeah, please. Yeah, questions. Right. I think so, I need to go to the lecture again. So. Yeah, and uh, if you if you can if you listen uh, uh, the lecture again, you can get more doubts. Okay, and you people are most welcome. You know, because my way of teaching is actually learning. Because when I teach the people, I want to learn. Okay. okay, this is what I personally believe. So if you ask me the question, I will get opportunity to learn more. Okay. okay. So, so actually my self-interest is involved into this. <laughs> okay. So, but by the way, uh, in every, every discussion, I've given some interview question list. Uh, Pravi, have you seen that? Yeah. Okay. So if you have seen that, uh, those questions was uh, referred from different blogs or even some, uh, uh, stack of flow. Okay, so you uh, can ask me. That I'm not applying for the entry level positions. We are keeping like seven years of experience, and we are applying for the seven years experience positions. So that was a problem right now for me. Uh, can Can you repeat? Uh, can you come back? I don't understand. Uh, we are not applying for the entry level positions. We are keeping like seven years of fake experience, and we are applying for the job. That was a process going on here. Okay, so everybody of you are in the same boat. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Avi, is 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 that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. 
Oh, that's that's it. Uh, why not you told me? Yeah? See, I should thank to Pravi because at least she's frank to me to tell this truth. Okay, if you have told me this truth from day one, I can tell you the different kind of book <laughs> and different kind of training. Yeah, that was going on right now. Okay, so anyway, uh, but still, uh, is my training was useful to you people? Yeah. Okay, uh, and I I should make it more useful to you people, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So uh, for that, I have to suggest you more books. Are you ready to refer for more books? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Okay. So actually, uh, I think uh, one book is there which comes to my mind. Okay. Uh, that is called Effective Java. Okay. Okay. So let me write the title here. And uh, because I was not aware that this is the problem with you people, but still I want to help you maximum. So Effective Java is a great book. Have you referred this book ever? I have already seen that book. I think so. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so, but I just want to add one thing. Uh, seeing and referring that book is not enough. We have to read that books every every now and then. Okay. Okay. So, because that is a great book, and uh, my experience is that because uh, you know, if I'm a trainer, even I have not, I have to go through an interview process, right? Let's say if I'm looking for a training opportunity in a company, they also interview me. Okay. Is that okay to you people? Right. So what what yeah. I observe, what I observe, people ask the question, and many questions are straight from Effective Java book. Okay. 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 So you must have that book, and you know, recently uh, Effective Java uh, third edition comes, and that was based on Java nine. Okay. Okay. And I love to purchase it, but actually, unfortunately, in, in India, still it is not available. Okay, uh, so if you if you if you ever find a crack PDF, please donate me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, because I have effective Java that is based on Java six. Okay. okay. Anyway, so so why I'm referring this effective Java? We can make a plan. Okay, we can make a plan. You please start referring and actually effective Java have seventy six recipes. Okay, they have item one, item two, item three. Okay. So you can make something like this. Actually, next week I'm busy. Okay, if you have told me earlier, I could be especially prepared for that. But we can make a plan uh, uh, like this. We can make a future plan. You people can team, uh, read ten recipes, and I can discuss ten recipes in thirty minutes uh, in my session, so that you could be also preparing for a, uh, a lateral interview. Okay. So here mostly. the focus contracting position they mostly focus on java web development see it's not like this i'm telling you uh, no, even if, even if you are looking for web development everybody wish to want an engineer who is sound knowledge in core java yes. okay you know what happens uh, abrar because if somebody don't have solid knowledge of core java he cannot do justice with the memory management yes okay and the efficiency is the requirement see uh, learning learning angular js is more easier than solving the multi threading issues yes okay so, so here you like yeah. contracting positions for 6 months or 1 year like that so they want us to know everything about java web ha uh, so definitely we are yeah. going to cover web uh, abrar yeah. we are yeah. going to cover web also but uh, once you realize uh, okay please add on yeah go ahead i don't have any questions so <laughs> okay but anyway uh, this is a good news to me uh, because i was not aware that uh, you are uh, going into that scenario because what i thought that you are just pass out from college people and you are looking for a job yeah okay yeah that's, anyway, that's actually true but we look for job in different fortunately places. here they don't have entry level for international students <laughs> I don't know what's what's the scenario we are talking about, but anyway, uh, God is great, okay, and world is wrong, okay, okay. Anyway, bye for now. But this is a good information you have so, given me. Yeah, please. yeah, yeah. Abhi, tell me. Yeah. So what what will be the what will be the actual difference between the the experienced people and non-experienced people while working? Because still it is the same code, and uh, I think it's mostly you need to use a different framework to solve the, some kind of issues in a. the existing okay. application or uh, you might be start coding so, so yeah okay so abhi is asking me have you all listened to his question abhi yeah. was asking me what is the difference between fresher like it's, and, it is the it and, is the i mean same code thing and uh, 
No, like the way the explaining is different. The way the people uh, who are having the experience is different. They will use the technical terms and everything. No, no. Let me let me tell. See, I can tell you thousands of uh, 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 bombardment of technical term to impress you. It doesn't help you. Yeah. What help yeah. you? I'm telling you. <clears throat> okay. Just hold on. Let me let me complete, and then is I will it, listen to you. Is it something related to like uh, system design and like how you solve the? uh problems uh, existing problems in uh, handling the data like that or uh... okay let me write like this so fresher and expert have the same difference as the differences between art and science okay 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 so if you see here uh, actually what what fresher thing that yeah Ravi, are you are you saying something? No, I can't get in your voice and I can't see your screen. Yeah, I don't know. My screen was shared to you people. Let me share it again. Okay, so now. Okay, just just a minute. Is that visible now? Yes. Okay, so I was saying that. Uh, People are asking me what is the difference between fresher and experience. I say in a philosophical way, what is the difference between art and science? Okay, art and science means what? You only know rules right now that okay, this will not compile, this will compile, but you have to polish your skill so that programming become art for you. Okay, do you understand? That means you should you should start thinking in terms of performance. if okay. you are showing seven year experience you should start understanding in terms of design pattern you should okay. start understanding in terms of architecture level questions okay okay so you have to make your knowledge like art okay you have to be like picasso <laughs> it's over actually i'm not <laughs> yes, it's actually over over motivation dose i don't want to give you uh, but anyway well we we should not be like fresher uh, person who's just like it, drawing it drawing if we are writing a code somebody can sense let me give you a very small question okay it will give you what kind of what i want to expect from you if you are my student okay because i am also taking the little batches okay let's say let's say if somebody is saying something like this i equal 4 so this is how a fresher write the code yes okay and this is how a seasonal engineer write the code okay now now you have to think why this code is superior to this code see how small code this is yes or no yeah but Hardly, it varies it varies yeah but if i'm if i'm a, if, if i'm your uh, if you are if i'm your manager and if i see you coding like this even after 7 year of fake experience i will catch you okay but if you write like this i can think i can appreciate you that means you have some mind okay so pravi why this code is better you are using the latest version for the coding no no yeah pravi where is the latest version i'm just saying i i double equal to 4 or i'm saying 4 double equal to i where is the so where is the latest version matters it's it's, it's same it's there since java 1.0 ah uh, because you know like uh the comp- uh, the Uh, the pro, uh, the what the compiler does is like it goes back and gets the value of i once i did not get you it it, no? it checks the lhs first are okay. are i i wish to use some hindi but i cannot use with you people uh, <laughs> may, you can use okay. the hindi i don't okay. i think i don't okay. have problem i don't know about others okay so uh, anyway let leave it so uh, aise kaam nahi chalega if i say like this if you understand It okay it's the so, left hand side first okay so let me use demo okay uh, use. can i uh, can i uh, try yeah, yeah please please so i think it first it checks the compatibility of data types with the first flow yeah yeah i'm listening yeah uh, compatible uh, whether the two data types are equal or not the first uh, In the second case, I mean, if four equal to i, so four is the type of integer, and then it checks the type of integer. 
whether i is a data type of integer or not okay and then so i i i, I will give you an answer but you have to mail me a chocolate <laughs> <laughs> yeah sure okay anyway just kidding don't do it uh, okay so what i'm giving you uh, let me tell you why this code is better and you know these are small small things okay and i i'm still wondering why you people have not told you what you are planning to do okay anyway so if i say here int i equal to uh, 9 and if i say like this let's say if i'm saying i double equal to uh, i double equal to 9 this how i fresh write the code this is what i told you yes or no Yes. Okay. Uh, I is nine. Okay. Else I is not nine. Okay. This is what we write it. You know, there is a programming language that is called C. Okay. Right. So, what is possibility? I is not nine. What is the possibility? Possibility. Let's say programmer was little careless on some particular day, and rather than applying double equal to, he is apply only one equal. To. By the way, we are fortunate. Okay. Yeah, okay. it's a sign. Actually, by the way, we are more fortunate in Java because Java straight away give us compilation error. But yeah. if we are doing the same code in C or C plus plus, it doesn't give us compilation error. What C plus plus or C thinks that we are trying to assign nine into i. So actually, the meaning of the code has completely changed. So okay. if a, if a programmer have a habit of applying constant here and variable here. if he is trying to do something like this even it will not work even in c programming you understand why this code is considered superior okay because it doesn't so, assign uh, the particular yeah. i value to it, 9 it cannot be it cannot be assigned like this in any programming language forget about uh, c c++ python no programming language will support like this yes so that means our code is more robust do you understand this thing yeah so such kind right of question if you are coming to me let's say for a interview i will definitely ask this question to you okay do you understand do you get a flavor of what kind of question we expect if you are having this much experience yeah yeah okay and who can help you good books okay good books okay. can help you okay, okay. what okay. kind like of effective... do, do, what kind of books do we need to refer them you start with effective java okay abhi as i suggested you right now actually next week i am too much occupied you have to make programming a art for you okay art means what deeper knowledge okay not the superficials right okay so bye for now right actually i have some other uh, session for some guy okay so he's he's pinging me <laughs> okay. okay but i i really enjoy teaching to you people right 